Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for the Destination China. This is part of the Cambridge International Asia Pacific University Week. And today we are going to um, share about 45 minutes uh, with you to talk about the learning and the studying experience in China. So um, please feel free to join us for the rest of the week. And uh, later today, um, yeah, another two hours, we are also going to have another session, which is focusing on destination Hong Kong, SAR China. So uh, please feel free to join us later. And on Saturday, you will also have a chance to meet uh, 36 top universities uh, from Asia Pacific uh, and directly uh, ask questions to them. So please feel free to um, join us at the um, University Week online. So today we are very delighted um, to have uh, the below speakers, guest speakers with us today. Uh, I am Dora Duan. I'm the Senior Manager of Recognition and Policy uh, for East Asia. I'm based in Beijing, China. And today we are very delighted to have Christopher, the Director of Learning and Teaching Academy of Future Education from Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University, as well as Helen Li, the International Recruitment and Development Manager, also from Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. And we also have Louis Wong, um, the Global Community Communication and Management Program Officer from Zhejiang University. Um, and we are very delighted today to have two uh, current students with us. So we have Michelle uh, from Indonesia, who is the first year of a financial mathematics student uh, with Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University, as well as Queen, um, a, a, a Korean student, uh, uh, also doing his fourth year of BA marketing with Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today. And we hope you can uh, enjoy the presentation today to uh, see a little bit of the learning and the studying uh, of uh, English program, degree program uh, in a Chinese university. So first of all, I would like to uh, say a little bit of housekeeping. So during the presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the Q&A session. Uh, it should be shown on the uh, below button uh, in your screen. And um, if you have any technical issues, for example, you cannot see us or you cannot hear us, please please leave a message in the chat room. So our uh, facilitators will be able to know uh, you cannot see us or hear us properly. Okay, um, so that's all from me. And I would like now to pass the mic uh, to Christopher to give you an overall idea of China as a destination. Thank you. Okay, one well, moment, everybody. We're just going to share our screen. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Good. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to give a short presentation, a talk about. Uh, studying here in China, what it's like to be in China. Um, I've been here just over a year and I've been working now as the Director of Learning and Teaching in the Academy of Future Education here at um, XJTLU. So I think I can share some of my perspectives, my uh, understandings about what it's like to be here in China. So very quick contents about what we're going to look at. Um, I'm just going to give a quick welcome uh, as I've done. And then I'm going to talk about the studying, the education system, and then I'll pass over to my colleagues who will give an introduction of the universities, both here in, uh, in Suzhou and in Hangzhou. So China as a destination, a study destination. Uh, I think it's become a really popular destination uh, in the last couple of years because of the changing economy. It really has uh, taken off, as you know, many of you will be aware, uh, China today is one of the big uh, economic powerhouses of the world. And it is becoming more concentrated in um, a couple of key areas. 
So as you can see uh, on the graph on the right hand side, there are four key areas in China that have become uh, big development zones. So you have the Pearl River Delta, maybe you know Hong Kong uh, and Guangzhou and Guangdong, you know, uh, Shenzhen, those areas. The Yangtze River Delta, where I am located at the moment, around Shanghai and Suzhou. Uh, the Bohai Rim, which is Beijing, and then the Western China area uh, around uh, Chengdu and uh, Xi'an. So these areas have become very, very popular, very important uh, development areas uh, for the economy of China. And there's a lot of high tech industry, a lot of um, development of the cities and the cityscapes, which create a very international feel uh, and a very open feel that is very attractive to many people. Okay, let's go to the next, next one. So there are targets. Uh, the way that you know China keeps developing is that it sets um, its economic targets about the things that it would like to progress and promote uh, in a short period of time. And as you can see here, this is the 14th five-year plan that China has. And these are the eight major stages uh, that the Chinese government and the Chinese communities are working towards. So for our perspective, you have um, you know, key economic factors uh, such as the research and development spending. You also have elements to improve, such as number seven, uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, which I'll talk about in a little minute. Uh, and also things like sustainability, number six, the uh, green development. But China really is one of those countries that is constantly moving itself forward. Uh, and it is a really uh, major economy in the world you know, today from these factors. Move on. So the Belt and Road Initiative, if you're familiar with this, is a really important step uh, of you know, 21st century China that is connecting China both through sea trade routes, as you can see with the um, pink line at the bottom, and also land routes uh, going back over what was the historic Silk Road uh, through in Russia and into Europe. And so countries along this road countries along these routes where there's connections, they are being uh, encouraged to bring students and to uh, bring investment and trade and build their connections uh, with China and with uh, the Chinese you know, educational system. So this gives you a picture, it gives you sort of a graph of like the, the connections that are being developed. And so the Belt and Road is not only developing um, economically, you know, for trade, but it's also developing culturally by building connections and building um, you know, cultural connections between the countries and the peoples that are living along those lines. So you can see also you know, other uh, um, indicators that really do point to the rapid growth of China. Um, uh, I'm old enough to remember China in the dim and distant past of the, of the 80s, and you can see how quickly China has developed over the last 20 years, 20, 30 years, from being the 10th largest uh, country by GDP to being the second. And it's going to be the first in a very, very short space of time. So China has really rapidly increased its uh, you know, economic uh, impact and economic input uh, over the last 30 years. And that makes it a very, very popular, very important destination, a very important place to be working with and understanding and trading with and studying in. So this gives you another picture um, of that, the, the largest economies. And you can see you know, China's economy is almost twice as large as uh, the USA at present. China's also done a lot with uh, banking and with, uh, sorry, not banking, uh, with companies and, and um, you know, industry. Uh, you may be familiar with two of the most popular names on that list that you can see, uh, Alibaba and Tencent. You know, the Alibaba Corporation, um, home of Alipay, uh, one of the largest, um, you know, trading networks, paying networks. So if you come here to China uh, and you want to go and do some shopping, there's a platform called Taobao 
and you can buy anything and everything. You can search for things in Chinese, you can search for things in English and you can get products. So, you know, I'm living here in China. I was living before in uh, Europe, Western Europe. I was living in the USA. I've got access to more products and able to buy more home products from the UK through uh, Alibaba than even when I was living in, um, you know, Western Europe and other countries. So that's really quite interesting for me that I've moved around the world a lot over the last, you know, 30 years of my life, settling here now in China, and I can find all my local products, all the things that I wanted to buy historically when I was a young person here in uh, China through Alibaba. So there's always access to anything. Tencent is also very important. Uh, maybe you've heard of WeChat. Uh, WeChat is like life here in China. Uh, it's the way that everybody communicates on your mobile phone. It's an application that you use for uh, instant messaging and video conferencing and telephone calls. You can also use it for payment, the same with um, Alipay from Alibaba. And so life becomes really easy. It becomes a really easy way of living. So with the payment systems that both Alibaba and Tencent have, you go to your local stores, you go to your local shops, and you set it up on your phone and you scan a code. You don't need to exchange any cash. Everything is digital. You want to talk to somebody, you want to find out what is happening through the WeChat system. There are networks, there are groups, there are organizations. You can find out different communities that are happening they have different meetups and you can go and join in with them and then you can buy your product. So it doesn't matter where you are from, the simplicity of life because of the, the companies make it very easy for anybody to come here and live in China. Well, that's not moving. I think also it's worth noticing modern China. Um, as I said, I'm old enough to remember some of the you know, China in the past, some of the stereotypical images, but China today is not like that. You have, you know, ultra modern cities. You know, the picture in the top left hand corner is um, of Suzhou, the Oriental Arch. And there's a huge shopping mall underneath that. And it's a center of entertainment and shopping and food and fun uh, on the edge of the lake uh, here in uh, Suzhou. But you can also think about the cityscapes that you see in Shanghai that you can see also in Beijing and Xi'an and other major cities around China. China today is completely different. It's really developed. You have large scale concerts and you have um, you know, a lot of uh, entertainment areas that people go to. So there's more music and arts and fun, but you also have the modern styles, uh, the redesigning of some of the um, you know, traditional fashions in China. So China is really beginning to you know, become uh, a fashion icon, a fashion statement. And so this is really interesting uh, across the world today of how China is developing. So that was a bit of a brief interview, a uh, brief introduction about uh, modern China and what it's like in China. I'm now gonna give you a talk, a little bit of uh, information about the education systems in China. So, as you can imagine, with one of the largest populations in the world, China has the largest education system in the world. And so you have a lot of students who are taking examinations. So in June 2021 this year, there were 10.78 million students taking the Gaokao, which is the uh, high school lever uh, examination, which allows entrance into higher education and universities. You also have a lot of international students now coming into China and so there are a thousand uh, higher education institutions which are accepting and wanting to have international students at higher education across the country. So this is really becoming a big expansion of the education network here. Very quick, just brief introduction. Maybe this is something you can compare to your own uh, countries, uh, the education system and how it works here in China. You know, you go to primary school from six to 12, and then you enter a middle school. And at the end of your middle school, at the age of 15, there is an entrance examination into high school. And you can take different pathways. If you don't go into high school, you can go into a vocational high school and work your way around this way. At the end of your senior high school, which is around about 18, you take that Gaokao examination. 
that allows you entrance into university or there are different pathways that you can take uh, to get into your you know, chosen course. Between university, between your undergraduate degree and your master's degree, there is a national entrance examination as well. So there are you know, different uh, benchmarks and staging posts across the education system uh, for people to develop through. Universities are also now in different categories. Uh, you have got some private universities. You also have public universities. And there are 2,845, according to the Ministry of Education in 2018. And then there are these joint uh, venture universities, these Sino-foreign cooperations, such as uh, Shang Jiao Tong Liverpool University, where we're talking from today. And there are only nine of these. These are very unique universities uh, here in China. Other concepts of universities, uh, they sort of show the way in which uh, you know, China has been working to improve its education system over the last 20 years. So we can start from the you know, 211 universities. Uh, and this was created back in 1995 uh, to raise the standards of the top universities in China and to make them and bring them up to world standard. And this program, this project was very, very successful. So that was then upgraded into Group 985. And that was uh, started in 1998. And these created elite universities that were designed to primarily attract, um, or amongst the you know, local population, but to attract also international students. So these became uh, quite high ranking universities and there are 39 now on the list. And then from that, there is the C9 League. And this C9 League represents uh, the top global universities in China that are also top globally ranked in the world. So some of these universities are in the top classification of global universities and global rankings uh, on all the scales, like the Times Education or the CQS uh, scale. They're at the top of these um, you know, institutions. And the, you know, the Double First is a new project that has been introduced very recently and is uh, uh, a long-term project to bring the success of this you know, modernization and development program to a wider range of universities spread across the country. So China is really beginning to develop and invest a lot in its educational system and to make the universities top ranking, globally competitive, and some of the best universities that you have in the world. If you do have a look at the QS, Times Higher Education rankings, you will see many Chinese universities that are at the top of the scale competing with the more established names such as Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, Yale, etc. So that's the end of my part. I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Helen, who will talk about welcoming you to Shenzhou Tong Liverpool University. Thank you, Chris. Um, good afternoon, everyone. This is Helen from Xi'an Jiaotong Liverpool University Global Office. Thank you very much again for the wonderful presentation. And I will share you a little bit more of the Xi'an Jiaotong Liverpool University. So for my presentation, I will tell you who we are, who we like Xi'an Jiaotong Liverpool University, who you are, and why you should study at Xi'an Jiaotong Liverpool University, what courses we provide, and our missions and fees. So who we are, you probably heard from Christoph already, in China we have different groups, we have C9, we have group. 895, uh, 211, etc. And we have public university, private university, and we have independent joint venture university. So Xi'an Jiaotong Liverpool University is a joint venture university between University of Liverpool and Xi'an Jiaotong University. University of Liverpool, probably everybody else know it's a Russell group in UK, and Xi'an Jiaotong University just learned about it's a group C9 in China. Um, basically for China, Chinese students, if we can be accepted by Xi'an Jiaotong University, it's a high prestigious university and we feel like, oh, that's the guaranteed future. Our university is not in Xi'an, it's not in Liverpool, it's not in UK. We are located in Suzhou, which is a city around 25 minutes away from Shanghai by train. So you see a picture from the slides here. 
this is the city of Suzhou, the modern part of the Suzhou. And I am sitting at the XGHU library, which is around 20 minutes away from the lake, the Jinji Lake. Suzhou is rated the most livable city in China. And as I said, that was the most part of Suzhou, and this is more of the tradition part of the Suzhou. So Suzhou has over 2,500 years history, and it is the most popular tourist city in China as well. So you see the lake, you see canal and the old town areas. Um, that's really how beautiful Suzhou is. I'm not going to talk too much about Suzhou, but we'll give you some key factors of Xi'an Jiao to Liverpool University. We are very new, started on 2006, but we are now the largest international university in China. Um, we got over 90 students and factors from different countries, and we have over 80 degree programs. All the programs are taught purely in English. So why you should study at Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University? Here you see some pictures of the university, the campus, the living area, and the South Campus, etc. Here are some key reasons why you should study at Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. So first, you get a UK degree from University of Liverpool, which is exactly the same as when you're going to UK. And meanwhile, you will also get a degree from Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University, which is recognized by Ministry of China Education. All of our programs are taught entirely in English, 100% English. And you got a chance to study Chinese as well when you study at Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. So under China regulation, every undergraduate student, when they finish their degree program in China, they should be able to achieve a HSK three or four. And that is how we develop our program as well. For every international student, we design a special program, we design the Chinese program for them. And the students should be able to get to HSK ideally when they study, when they follow the university curriculum, they should be get to HSK four. That is like an IELTS six point six point zero so you should be able to speak and talk in, English, in Chinese. We also provide students with two plus two zoot. That means every student can choose to do two years in China and two years at University of Liverpool. So that will give students an experience and chance to understand the Chinese culture, meanwhile to learn the Western experience. So a purely uh, international education, China, Eastern and UK, the Western. And besides that, the university facility is like world-class campuses. Later on, I'm going to show you a few pictures and you will see how modern the university is. At the moment, our border is not open yet. So we provide the blended learning with great IT support. Interested students could go to learningmore.cn to find out more how XJTLU is conduct the online learning. And besides all those good reasons, we also have a very high quality. So as I mentioned, we are delivering over 80 programs and all the programs are accredited and moderated by University of Liverpool, as well as the UK Quality Assurance Agency. Actually, we offer three accreditation system. So for every module design, for every exam, we have internal moderator, we got external moderator, then we got final approval from University of Liverpool. So the quality is definitely assured. And besides the internal control quality from the education industry, we got various industry uh, accreditation body as well. For example, our business school is accredited by AACSB, Equus, and Amber, the famous triple crown. When you look at all the universities in the world, less than 1% of the universities in the world win the triple crown accreditation and architecture, got RIBA, biology, Royal Society of Biology, et cetera. Actually, we are looking for more accreditations for other different programs when the universe is developing. So here a list, but not all. Every information can be found from our website. 
when we finish about the when we uh, talk about the quality, etc. I also want to share with you a little bit of the student experience. So in our university, we pride all sorts of student experience. I'm going to categorize mainly into four parts. The first one, we provide excellent academic service that is that to show so every student has an academic advisor you should be able to see from your student portal whenever you got academic questions inquiries you can always go to academic advisor you got language support you got continuing support service that is academically and then we helpful for your life so every student will have a development advisor every student will got a language body and every student will have a body to help you to settle down before you actually join xjtlu and so academically lively and career xjtlu has a how do I say, XGHL is a career center provide really professional service for students. Um, our, our career service provide regular CVs, regular industry talk, and regular company visit. What's more, when students join to year two, every student will be assigned with a career mentor. The career mentor is usually we invited you we usually invite the industry professional from a uh, different industry with like at least 10 years of working experience and uh, they should at least hold a managerial position and those career mentors will be helping our students to understand how the real world will be like of course we have alumni support we got it support the picture here is actually our library and it support center is just over here uh, we got 24 alumni associations across the globe, large one in UK as we have two plus two option, but in China it's also very big. Some others are Singapore, Hong Kong um, and other regions. So subject area, I will quickly skip it. This is the undergraduate uh, subject area. If you are interested to learn more at this moment, precisely moment, our university is having an online open day. So you could quickly scan this QR code, register and join our online open day. Our dedicated counselor will be there to answer every little questions you have. You should also be able to see more details about our programs and each schools undergraduate uh, admissions we accept a level student as well as as level student so if you have finished as level it's the chance for you to join our year one directly if you got a level you can skip year one join our year two directly that means you can you will only need to do three years to get two degree from xian jiao to liverpool university and the university of liverpool IELTS requirement, I'm going to skip it. And the tuitions. The tuition fee in China is really affordable compared with UK, uh, any part of Australia, Europe, et cetera. So you will see the tuition here is 88,000 RMB. We also provide gorgeous scholarship for students. Again, it's our online open day now. I'm not going to talk too much, but invite you to join our booth later once you finish the presentation and say, get more questions if you'd like to ask. So here is a code and this is our contact details. If you'd like to have any other questions, please feel free to contact with us at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed, uh, Christopher and Helen. Um, thank you very much for the informative uh, informative presentations. I already seen questions are coming, uh, but we will take all your questions in the end of the presentation. So now uh, shall we, uh, give the mic to Zhejiang uh, Louis from Zhejiang University to give you another example of um, English degree program uh, and the learning and the studying experience uh, with another um, uh, Chinese university. So Louis, yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Christopher and Helen for sharing, and hello everyone uh, from. 
wherever you are uh, coming to this session. Uh, I'm Louise, the Global Communication and Management Program Officer uh, at Georgia University. And for the, for the coming 10 minutes, I will give you a brief introduction of Georgia University and International Campus and International Business School. Uh, here is one of the main gates of Zhejiang University, and in Chinese we call it Zhejiang Daxue or Zhejda in short. And the picture on the left side is one of the oldest buildings in Zhejiang University. It's located in Zhejiang University Zhejiang campus, and from this picture, you may think that our university has a long history. And indeed, Zhejiang University was founded in 1897 uh, in Qing Dynasty, with a history of 124 years now. And the motto of Zhejiang University is seeking truth and pursuing innovation. Zhejiang University is a comprehensive research university with national and international impact. It ranks among a few top universities in China in terms of its comprehensive academic strengths shown in teaching, research, and social service. And from this picture, you can see that uh, in the QS World University ranks 2022, Zhejiang University ranked number 45. And in terms of graduate, graduate employability, Zhejiang University ranks number 38 in the world. And our university is a comprehensive university with seven faculties and 37 college and schools which implies that students will be exposed to top talents and professors from all fields. And we have over 100 subjects available for, for the international students from these colleges. And currently we have over 60,000 full-time students from over 151 countries. And as you can see, we have students from different levels from undergraduate to PhD candidates. And here are some pictures of our university campus. We have seven campus and five in Hangzhou. And uh, here's one in Yuquan, which is the main campus of engineering, computer science, and uh, physical science. And that's the Zijingang campus, which is the main campus of Zhejiang University. And it's the biggest campus as well. And the CC campus hosts the Department of uh, Behavioral Science and the School of Medicine. And Zhejiang campus uh, is the home of Zhejiang, Zhejiang University's Guanghua Law School. And Huajiaqi campus, uh, which is the oldest campus, serves as the campus of agriculture. And Zhoushan campus, uh, which is located in Zhoushan, where is a very beautiful coastal city in Zhejiang, and it has the Ocean College. And the international campus, uh, I will introduce that in details later. And uh, all the English taught programs are located in international campus. And uh, here's a short video of the international campus. <laughs> And as I mentioned before, all the English taught programs are located in international campus. And there are three institutes uh, at our campus. One is DGE, which is Zhejiang University and University of Edinburgh Joint Institute. And they have uh, two due degree undergraduate programs available, uh, bio biomedical science and biomedical informatics. And another one is uh, Zhejiang University and UIUC Joint Institute. And they also have two degree programs available, uh, as you can see from here. And graduate fulfilling all the degree requirements will be awarded the bachelor degree of Zhejiang University and UIUC, uh, and also Zhejiang University and University of Edinburgh if you choose that, uh, that programs. 
And also we have other uh, Zhejiang Yu degree uh, undergraduate program available as well, as you can see from this page. And we also have a, a clinical medicine program available, which is a six year program available English taught for international students. And uh, here's the tuition fee, uh, as you can see here. Okay. And now I'm gonna move to uh, a brief introduction of Zhejiang University International Business School. Along with the internationalization of Zhejiang University, we want to expand its global capability to give more opportunities to international talents that's why we established International Business School in 2018 to provide more opportunities to give global talents uh, to global talents. And our vision is to become a leading global ecosystem with business education, focusing on new technologies, new economy and new finance. And ZIPS is based in Hanin, and we have established our teaching office in Beijing, uh, Shanghai, Chengdu, and Shenzhen, which means uh, some calls will be scheduled in those cities as well. And to provide our students with opportunities, not only in China, but also in the world, we also cooperate with academic partners, uh, including University of Cambridge, Wharton, Wharton School, and uh, Smart Africa, the organizations like that. And also from this page, you can see the uh, university and organizations we cooperate with in the world. And especially as uh, earlier Christopher mentioned, uh, Alibaba is a famous group, uh, famous company in China. And we are partnering with Aunt Group, which is a part of Alibaba Group, to give our students uh, a lot of uh, research support, a guest lecture, mentorship, and in company experience. And here are the list of our faculty members and professors from all different countries and all different fields of industry. And they're here not only to deliver students lectures, but also share their insights and experience from their own field. And we also have many distinguished professors, visiting professors and professor of practice. And as you, as you can see from uh, this slide, the first, the first gentleman, Dr. Hansen Su, uh, he is a distinguished professor at our school. And he is also the uh, former prime minister of South Korea. And now I'm gonna move to the, uh, one of the most popular English taught undergraduate program at Georgia University which is GCM. Uh, GCM is a four-year full-time English taught program. And uh, in GCM program, students will learn Chinese language and China study, acquire intercultural competence and be uh, equipped with finance, business and management skills. And uh, in, our, uh, in our program, the student to teach ratio is eight to one, assuming uh, that all students will be involved in the classroom and achieve their academic progress. And to help international students adapt to campus life in China, we arrange one Chinese mentor and one foreign mentor to support each student. And moreover, the diverse international uh, student com community uh, at international campus will, give, will make uh, students' life more colorful. And here are four course modules. And GCM is applied bilingual curriculum. English is the primary language of instruction with Chinese being used in applied settings and research and cross-culture communication is stressed through the program. It's very suitable for international students who come and study in China for their first time. And here's the admission process. And uh, the deadline for next year is February 28th. And our uh, tuition fee is 65,000 per year. 
And about the evaluation, uh, English proficiency and academic performance are very, are very important during the evaluation. Uh, we have two types of scholarships available. One is ZIPS undergraduate and uh, entrance scholarship. And uh, it's, the amount is from uh, 5,000 to 30,000 RMB and coverage up to 50%. And another one is Zips Excellent GCM Students Award. And currently, we have students from over 20, 23 countries at the GCM program. Now, here's a video of our students from GCM. Hello, everyone. My name is Desi Wu. I am 18 years old, and I was born and raised in Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm currently a student studying in Chen International Business School, taking the Global Communication Management Program. I choose to continue my study in Zhejiang because I know it is one of the best universities in China. Moreover, I take Global Communication Management Program because I feel that it suits me the most where communication, business, finance, and cultures are taught here by international educators alongside international students. I really look forward to be learning more from Zhejiang. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nguyen Kai and I'm from Tokyo, Japan. I will be a freshman going into the Global Communication Management Program at Zhejiang University. So one of the reasons why I chose CJU and in particular GCM is because out of all the universities I've applied to, CJU best fits my future aspirations of being a globally competent person. Also just simply studying in China, the center of technology and business, I strongly believe that it will build a strong foundation and important skills for me to thrive in a global setting. I'm very excited to study at Zips and meet diverse, um, diverse students from different backgrounds. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hoon Park and my English name is Eric. I'm from Korea and I'm 18 years old and you all can call me just Eric. Um, and the reason why I applied for the GCM is Zhejiang University understands the importance of integrating language with business. I strongly agree, agree with this, and that's why I would like to become part of the program. The course offered covered many topics like learning language such as English, Chinese, and management, and I'm very excited to learn as much as possible. I'm very certain that the program will give me all the qualification I need to become a very successful businessman. That's why I applied to this Zhejiang University Global Communication Management. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Julian Charista Limcogo, but you can call me Jules for short. I'm currently 18 years old and I live in the Philippines. Ever since I stumbled upon the course Global Communication and Management, it became my only choice. I chose this because I'm very interested in all the aspects of the course, from looking at things in a global perspective to developing better communication skills and learning more about management. Besides this, I also, of course, want to engage myself more into the Chinese culture. I really believe that Zhejiang University is the place that will help me become a successful entrepreneur in the future. Hello, everyone. My name is Sodawit Wadawat Kirikun. You all can call me Jack. I'm currently 18 years old and from Thailand. I have chosen GCM program from Zhejiang University because I believe this program can improve my communication and man management skills to match the global standard. I am also very curious on how the Chinese culture works. Hi, my name is Maria Nafi. I'm 19 years old. I'm Persian. I was born and raised in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and I currently live here as well. I am enrolled in the GCM program and I uh, chose this because I sought an opportunity in this program and I think it fits very well for my uh, long-term career goals and my future. And thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, you, uh, you can scan the QR code and also contact uh, our program. Uh, the email address is here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. And um, before we move on to the Q&A session, I already seen there are um, quite some um, questions coming along. Before we're going um, through that, can we um, please invite 
two current students uh, from Qian Jiaotong Liverpool University to share with us um, on their living and uh, studying experiences um, in China. So uh, first of all, can we have a Michelle? Um, so Michelle is from Indonesia and she's the first, she's in her first year uh, in financial mathematics uh, with Xi'an Jiaotong Liverpool University. So Michelle, please. Hi everyone. Um, thank you for the time and the opportunity. So brief introduction, my name is Michelle Leonard. You can call me Michelle. I am a fourth year financial mathematics student in XGTLU. I first came to Suzhou in 2018. And at the time I had no expectation because I had never been to China before. I had never visited China before. So zero expectation on how the country will be, especially the city of Suzhou. But, and I'm not exaggerating when I'm uh, saying this, Suzhou is extremely beautiful. I was taken aback when I um, first arrived. I remember seeing this gigantic just like huge lake and it's super beautiful and uh, to my surprise it's very modern uh, the buildings are cool uh, in a way you can say that and so I had a very pleasant uh, first impression of Suzhou and of course um, first time you know visiting China with very little Chinese speaking skills I struggled a little bit but then I remember how helpful SGTLU was in helping um, international students settle in. So I remember the first time um, we came there, they already gave, gave us a lot of um, like tutorials and like uh, what to do when you first arrive in Suzhou, how to um, visit the dorm and like get your stuff settled in and everything, get a room uh, in the dorm. And then SJTLU was very helpful with the whole police registration process and the health check uh, process. So all in all, I had no, um, I, I didn't struggle, even though there, there is the language barrier. So I had a very uh, pleasant experience. Uh, fast forward into my pre-COVID days in SGTLU, I, I can confidently say that I had a very uh, good time in SGTLU and Suzhou felt like home to me. Uh, it's actually very sad that we are not able to return to China yet uh, right now because I really feel like home in Suzhou and especially the area that SGTLU is, which is super close to the dorm, it became, my daily routine just became something that I look forward to. Because in Indonesia, at least, you can't really uh, just like walk outside, outside to like go places. People usually take the car because of the pollution and everything. But in Suzhou, all the public trans transportation is very well managed. And I just, I walk to school uh, every day and like breathe the fresh air and everything. And it was a really um, good experience for me. So talking a little bit about the education and like teaching system in SKTLU before the pandemic, for me, I really like how they divide um, the, the grading into three parts, which is the uh, coursework. This can be homework and like projects. And then there's also the midterm exam and final exam. For me personally, I manage my time very well because of this very nice, uh, nicely divided grading system. So I remember I would go to the library, which HTTLU's library is amazing. It has 10 floors and it has all the, um, you can just, it has so many like tables and like surfaces, both in IT and just like books. So I really, I was really satisfied with the service of SGTLU's library. Uh, I remember I would stay in the library because it was so comfortable. It was so cozy to study there and everyone is just like studying. So I feel motivated. Um, I would go to the library after class and then I would revise. And then after I revise, I would go back to my dorm. And by the time I returned to my dorm, all of my materials have been like, it's done for the day. And so I just hang out with my friends. There's a lot of, um, food, like good food in Suzhou, especially milk tea. And there's this um, late night snack, like late night um, shao kao. It's called shao kao. And it's not very healthy, but it's like a guilty pleasure for me. And so uh, my friends and I, we used to go down, like it's right um, in front of our dorm. So it was like very easy. We just buy food and then we watch a movie upstairs. So it's like, yeah, very pleasant experience. Um, I... 
I don't think a lot of people ask me because I happen to have a YouTube channel, but it's not, I'm, I'm not promoting myself, but in case you want to see how Sujo is or like how living life as an SGTU student is, you can check that out. Um, my YouTube is the same as my name here. Uh, I haven't actually made a video about Sujo in a while because, you know, I'm back uh, at home in Indonesia, but if you want to uh, look at that, you can. Um, yeah, as I was saying, uh, I really like how I can manage my time well. So during the uh, holiday, because in China, you can just take tra trains to go to other cities. Uh, we will visit Shanghai a lot. And then I went to Beijing on my uh, last year before the pandemic happened. It was a very, I didn't expect to be able to experience such cultural uh, richness from studying abroad. That was not something that I expected. I, I thought I would just be buried in my book like 24 seven and like studying, but turns out I got to experience so much more than just studying that just like math, uh, which is my major. Uh, another thing that I like about HTLU is how helpful the professors are. There's always um, office hours uh, given by the professors with, where you can go visit their office and then talk about the materials that day that you might not understand yet. So all in all, very, great experience in HTLU. Now, uh, talking a little bit about my experience during the online study, um, it's different. Uh, I had to struggle a little bit to adapt to the online learning experience. And um, most of it is caused by the change in my um, environment. So like it's a lot of it is just personal reasons, uh, but I noticed how helpful HTLU has been especially with the whole uh, technology and IT support. Um, the professors, they, I remember a lot of them, they, they were very helpful and very considerate towards international students who were not able to attend the class in person. They made sure that we you know, got all the materials and they made sure that we understood all the assignments given, all the materials given. So I was very satisfied, especially um, compared to my friends in Indonesia who go to local universities. Um, some of the professors don't really, um, they don't really understand the struggle of learning online and how easy you, you can lose focus. So I would say all in all, HGTLU has been very helpful and professional in taking care of international students. Thank you very much, Michelle. I could definitely see how much you miss the Fudo <laughs> yes. and the way I hope you have a chance to um, back to China uh, for work um, if you, uh, if not um, this year after you graduated, but for sure uh, visit China again. And um, shall we then uh, invite Huin um, uh, from, yeah, Huin is um, um, a Korean and he is currently in his fourth year of BA marketing with Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. So Huin, um, are you there? Can you? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Thank you. Can you unlock unlock my camera? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I'm Hoon. I'm from South Korea, <laughs> and I'm year four BA marketing student studying in a business school. And so far, my life in China has been pretty awesome, I would say. And uh for a little background of mine i was from when i was six to nine i i spent my lifetime in the united states i was growing up there and while while i was in high school i somehow i knew about xjtlu and just thought it was an interesting life choice to make to go study in a country with opposite environment and actually my parents disagree because my parents disagreeing trying out trying out a new environment because they were afraid they wanted, they wanted me to stay in the States, but yeah, I was stubborn and decided to come here. So in conclusion, I came to XJTLU only with pure curiosity and I found my life here pretty satisfying. And people here are nice. I actually came to China. The semester starts in September. I came to China on July. I don't know why I did that, but... And I... When I was dropped off and dropped off in from my dorm, I didn't know where to go because the students were not there and I was all alone. I wanted I wanted to drink water, but I just couldn't because I didn't I couldn't 
I couldn't speak Chinese. I didn't know where the supermarket was. I didn't know how to look at the map. But fortunately, local Chinese, I'll say local, yeah, you know, local Chinese people over there helped me out with making friends where the supermarket is, how to buy stuff. And yeah, people were really nice over there. And there are a lot of <clears throat> there are a lot of entertaining stuff that I can enjoy during my free time, such as <laughs> like um, laser tags and uh, nice dessert cafes, something like that. And also, my favorite part is life nightlife, and especially I, I like the night food culture in China. And <laughs> Every night, there are a lot of night food trucks on the street waiting for us. And every single one of them, they're tasting awesome. And I sometimes, whenever I feel kind of tired, want to escape Suzhou, I always cross over to Ch Shanghai. And it's very close. It's, you know, it's only 30 minutes with the train. And <laughs> in academic, uh, talking about academics, in HAT, they teach every every single modules fully in English. So even if your Chinese skills are not good, I don't think you'll encounter any problems studying and socializing. That's what I think. And I started Chinese. I started studying Chinese in here in the school all the way from the bottom. And now my level reached up to where I can socialize fully in Chinese. So I don't think I don't think you need to worry about learning Chinese because the environment here will support you. Sujo is a in more international city than other other cities in China. So if you really cannot speak Chinese, many people here will speak English for you. And if, right now I'm currently located in Suzhou, China. Uh, when COVID-19 happened, I was, I was located in South Korea and I had to come back to China. It was a, it was a complicated process, but I did make, make it back to China. And the classes over here, they're all on, on site. There are some online, online classes, but most of them, at least for marketing students, they're, they're all on site. So I didn't feel much differences pre and post COVID. And although the environment of this place is totally different from where I was growing up, I feel myself very satisfied living here. And I feel, and I even can, and I'm even considering to settle down in China after my graduation. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, Huyin. And glad to know you are able to return to China to take your classes uh, in person. Thank you very much all. And um, that's all sharing session. And now I have seen questions are coming in the screen. And could our speakers please open your camera and we will um, pick some of the questions um, for you to um, explain or answer. So first of all, um, um, a lot of, I think some of our um, participants are also Chinese uh, citizens or Chinese passport holders. So they are asking if it's a Chinese national um, who studied a level uh, in another country um, besides China. Um, so uh, uh, ex um, do they still need to do Gao Kao or are they eligible to apply using A level? Helen or yeah. Louise? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, first for every Chinese nationality, they need to go through Gao Kao. But as you may know, for 2020 and 2021, there's a special policy for students who could transfer to China. Um, folks, so what I'm going to suggest is just to follow our university WeChat account uh, to uh, and if we have any updates news, we are going to release on that account. And for Chinese students who studied overseas, there might be a special route for you, which I, I'm not so sure. I need to I need to have more background information. So we also accept Hua Chaoseng. But I can't tell you if you're Hua Chaoseng or not until you give me more information. So what you could do is you should call to our office number, which I just published in the WeChat account, um, 8816, 8889. Then 
yeah, we should be able to give you more detailed information if you, uh, yeah, if you need to understand how, how to join XJTLU. Thank you, Helen. Please leave the uh, telephone number in the chat room. Yeah, I and, will. Um, please um, set it to all participants so everyone could see it. Louise, anything to add from Zhejiang uh, University side? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so you also have Hua Chiao, um, so uh, root for, um, okay, but um, definitely needs to be further considered with um, other whole round documents, right? Yes. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, so if you are Chinese national, but you studied A level in, um, in the other countries, um, there is another route called Hua Chiao route application, uh, but they, um, the universities will need to consider if you are eligible uh, to take that route or not. So please uh, contact the universities directly. And there is another um, question coming up. I'm not sure, um, uh, maybe Christopher or Helen, um, if you can help. Um, it's about um, an overview of the religion tolerance in China. Um, so uh, maybe if Christopher is there, Helen? Christopher is not here, but I have okay. an even more experienced person, Marcos, okay. my okay. colleague, who is going to give a presentation about the student experience. So he can tell, uh, he can help to answer the, the religious tolerance in China. What's your opinion, Marcos? Yeah, Michael, could you first introduce yourself to the oh, audience sorry. if possible? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Marcus Davis and I work in the global office, but I'm also, um, have had a number of academic roles at the university. And uh, I've taught many, many classes here. I've done teacher training and student teaching. And the uh, uh, no content of any class I've taught in eight years, whether it's teacher training or student teaching, no content has been restricted, whether that's religious, cultural, historical, no content whatsoever. I personally am not religious, but I've had religious students and religious colleagues of a range of religions from around the world. And none of them have ever told me a story of having their ability to talk about it restricted. None of them have ever said that they felt that uh, their ability to identify themselves with their beliefs has been restricted. I know that uh, when they've wanted to, they've been able to go to their places of personal worship without any problems whatsoever. As I said, I personally don't do any of those things, but my friends who do do it have never had a problem. I, I, I can't imagine a situation in which it would be a problem, to be honest with you. It would have to be an extreme case of something very unusual. So no, I, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Thank you very much um, for, sh for your sharing. I think okay. this is important uh, because, um, um, so next is about visa policy. So um, Luis, um, can you please share a little bit update of the current visa policy for international students? Uh, so currently, uh, like based on the Chinese government, only students from South Korea can apply a student visa and uh, no updated from the government yet. So uh, by far, uh, only Korean students can come to China. And when the borders open and the, the things get more clear, uh, I think we all will know how it goes and our, our students from around the world can apply the student visa. Okay, thank you very much. And next one is about um, the rough monthly living cost in China. So uh, I think it's really depends because um, China is um, have a different cities, different provinces, but um, um, I don't know, maybe um, Michelle or Huin, um, are you able to give an idea of your like roughly um, monthly living cost in China, like in US dollars or in pounds? Yeah. Well, 
my minimum uh, cost for living is around 3000 excluding the rent. Rent really d depends where, where you live. Personally, I live outside in a cheap ap apartment, which costs like 2200 RMB. I'm not sure which, how much is that in dollars. That's about $700, yeah. 700. For, so 3000 RMB, right? For food. Okay, for food and the transport and entertainment, Let's et cetera. Say 3000 to 5000, 3000 is what, uh, how much it will cost if you have two meals a day. Okay, cool. So for, mm -hmm. like, let's say 5,000, that's about $700, $700 and mm -hmm. then plus about 300. So that's about $1,000 a month. If you are living, um, somehow it's, it's a real living experience here, but mm -hmm. it really depending which part of the China you are staying. And I think Suzhou is a, a, a medium, uh, medium cost for living yeah okay thank you very much um and then i seen there is a, a question about um working part-time in china as a student so if you are having a student visa are you able to work part-time uh in china and getting some uh working experiences during your student visa Helen or uh, Luis, um, can you are you able to answer this one? Helen or oh, Luis? Okay. So uh, the student who holding a student visa and they can do part time job in the university. However, they cannot uh, work out of the university because uh, it's kind of illegal. And if, you, if, if the students want to do an internship, they need to change their uh, student visa to that type of visa. So it's a little bit complicated. Uh, com complicated. Um, they do can uh, do some uh, part-time job, but yeah, it's limited. Okay. So your international office will support them if there is um, a need and yeah. also, and also, um, uh, if uh, uh, is there any uh, like working placement experiences embedded with your course for students? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, currently, like if students study at our university, especially at uh, ZIX, the international international business school, uh, we do have some cooperations with the uh, companies which can offer students uh, some internship and work experience uh, when they finish their uh, study in university. Okay. Thank you very much. And the last question I will take is um, uh, about uh, why China is having a four years um, undergraduate program. And um, like for both of your universities, uh, what's your uh, first year looks like and what's uh, from academic side, um, what's it all about? Yeah. Helen, are you there? No? Luis, can you go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I think like most of, uh, of the university in the world, uh, the first year for uh, students, especially university students, is to stress the, um, the foundation of the course they choose. So same way as our school, uh, we have some basic foundational courses available for the students. And also, because... Uh, yeah. Hello, can you? Yeah. Yeah. You are back. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. okay. So uh, where should I catch up? Like, I think like most of the uh, universities in the world, uh, at the first year, we offer some uh, basically foundational uh, courses, classes. And for the students' life, because we're considering about the transfer transformation of students from high school to university, and we will give them some uh, support in their uh, daily, life, daily life, like events, activities. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Helen, anything to add from your side about the first year uh, or why China have a four-year higher education system? 
Uh, well, we are not a traditional China university. So for us, if the student holding A level, we accept them into year two. That is three years. Thank you very much, Helen. So, um, for example, there are nine different types of a diff There are nine um, collaboration universities, as uh, di as described by Christopher, introduced by Christopher. For those universities, like Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University, they do accept a level uh, to enter year two directly. So, if you are using a level to apply to Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool, you will be able to. Uh, be eligible to um, have a three years uh, to get your uh, full degree program. Yeah. Thank you very much. And um, that's all for today. Um, and thank you very much for joining us for Destination China. We hope um, the session give you an overall idea of the learning uh, and the living experiences in China. And we hope um, if you have more questions for the Chinese universities, please feel free to visit their booths um, on the virtual college fair. And you will also be able to join the group consultation if you book one with them on this Saturday. So all the uh, university staff will be there to take your personal questions. Um, and thank you very much for all the Sorry, is it just me or did Dora? I think it's her. Okay. Sorry, I, I guess on behalf of Dora, uh, uh, just a big thank you to everyone who has attended today and big thank you to uh, you, Louise, Helen, and Christopher uh, for presenting the session today. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Um, and hope to see you at the next session, uh, Destination Japan. Thank you. Bye. Bye.